happening now. Hundreds of thousands without power, entire communities leveled. Just as quickly as he swept in, Michael now heading out to sea, but it's going to be a long road of rebuilding. Victims of that deadly limo crash being laid to rest starting today as new details about the limo's failed safety inspections come to light. Well, we've reached a tipping point and our emotions and everything else is spilled on the floor, so now's the time. The police chief talking about the death of a 12-year-old, his life taken in a shooting on the north side. As outrage and grief spreads through the city, he and other leaders are calling for an end to the senseless violence. From WSYR-TV Syracuse, the local station, you're watching the morning news. And a very good morning to you. I'm Jennifer Sanders. It is 6.01. And I'm Dan Cummings. Good to see you again this morning. We turn to Kate Thornton with thermometers in hand, and mm -hmm. the mercury has dropped considerably. I, by about 20 <laughs> degrees compared to the last previous mornings we've been waking up to. And because the air is cold enough aloft, we are dealing with some lake effect rain showers right now. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. Well, a tipping point, that's what police chief Frank Fowler calls the latest shooting in the city of Syracuse, claiming the life of a 12-year-old boy. James Springer III was a sixth grader at Grant Middle School. Wednesday night, he was shot and killed on John Street near Park Street. His stepmother suffered a graze bullet wound that night as well. This came after a string of gun violence and crime throughout the city just within the past month. Chief Frank Fowler urging anyone and everyone to come forward who knows anything about these crimes to bring those responsible to justice and to speak up before there's yet another tragedy. There were some things that occurred in that neighborhood and the days leading up to this that we weren't aware of. Had folks in that neighborhood called the police, we would have been able to intervene. Now, I'm not saying that we would have saved this child's life, but I'm saying to you that I would love to have had a chance to save this child's life. So far, detectives don't have any suspect information in the little boy's death, and they don't yet know if he was actually the target or simply caught in a crossfire of a shooting and a bullet that was meant for someone else. A large gathering of neighbors and family on the city's north side yesterday evening remembering James. The community now reeling from the senseless act of gun violence. The grief hitting adults and children as many of them went off to school to hear what happened about one of their classmates. It doesn't matter whether it's an elementary school, high school, or whether it's something in the community. You know, it's, it could be an adult. It's a hard message to deliver. Hearts bleed for these families, for our children, and what's going on in our community was planned for later last night, but something caused people to start running and police arrived to the scene a short time later. It doesn't appear that anyone was hurt, but people, of course, were very shaken up. Well, we've mentioned the recent spate of violence in the city. It's been a very tough month for children, their families, and for the city school district. The numbers are staggering. The list is long. Twelve children or teenagers involved in acts of violence just since September 11th. Now, no part of the city seems immune. This week's deadly shooting was on the north side. On the south side, an eight-year-old girl was among five people shot on Midland Avenue last month. And a 15-year-old boy died just last week on the west side. There is no simple cause for this. There is no simple solution to this. Um, we have communities with individuals in it. We as a, a community should ask ourselves, what is going on in our collective community that people this age are being caught up in this violence? And so as those questions are asked, Owens and others are issuing a clarion call that change has to come from within the community. First things first, though, the cops want to solve the most recent crimes, including the death of young James Springer III. Any witnesses or anyone who has any information is urged to either call confidentially 315-442-5222 or use the confidential SPD tips app. Well, time now is 6.05. We continue to follow developing news surrounding that deadly limousine crash in Schoharie over the weekend. The 2001 Stretch Ford excursion was cited back in March for brake failures. Records show when the limo was reinspected last month, those issues had not been corrected. Investigators are also looking into why the vehicle had different license plates during both inspections. The operator of Prestige Limo, Naman Hussein, 
was arrested Wednesday. The DA says there were suitcases in his car. Hussein is free on bail after pleading not guilty to criminally negligent homicide. His father, the owner of the company, is still out of the country. Coming up on 606 right now, six people are now confirmed dead from Hurricane Michael, that storm that tore through the southeast and now going back out to sea, left very little in its wake. Now heading out to the Atlantic, but as he does, the cleanup on land is just getting started. Well, the thing is, you know, this is a small little town, you know, this is our little town, and so every restaurant's gone, every store's gone, and then all my neighbors, everybody's home's gone, and so... Um, it, when you think about it, you know, all of these, all of their lives are cold here, you know, so how do you, how do you, what do you do? The, the water. So many people have now lost their homes, everything they had, electricity and cell service too. Now in Mexico Beach, Florida, crews are working to help anyone who might have stayed behind. The seaside city virtually cut off from the rest of the world, bridges closed, roads blocked. Such destruction. Well, now from your local election headquarters, today is the last day to register to vote in New York State. And if you have not registered yet, well, the Board of Elections is reminding you to watch out for scams. Some voters in the state are getting some texts and calls from numbers with a 607 area code trying to get your personal information. Of course, remember, do not respond to any messages offering to register you over the phone. The state does not allow you to register that way. And for more information on how you can protect yourself, just visit our website, localsyr.com. All right, 607, fall like weather is here mm -hmm. to stay. And that's time, huh? Yeah. Yes, All yeah. Right. Hey, so we're not going to be doing the yo yo or the roller coaster with the temperatures anytime soon. So make sure uh, now you can go ahead and trade out the summer wardrobe for the fall. Get yeah, those sweaters out, the jackets. Out. And the sweaters the jackets.